now I would like to talk about a few different features that relate to the grid. What exactly is this grid? Well, I think the best way to see it is in the software. Now, over here you can see you have this series of vertical lines. Now, the size in between these lines, called the step size in machine, can easily be changed. So, as a general rule of thumb, I like to set the step size to the fastest note in my pattern. So, for instance, if I'm working with a drum group, I'm probably going to set my step size to match the hi-hats, because those hats are the fastest notes in the pattern. So, how do you actually change it? Um, well, you can go to the grid menu here, make sure you're on step up here, and then select the value just by using the knob. Now, you might be wondering what exactly a 16th note or an 8th note sounds like. If you're not too familiar with music theory, it can be kind of confusing. So, as a quick tip, I can use the note repeat to hear how fast those notes are for my given tempo. So if I'm wondering if my hi-hats are 1 16th, I can set my note repeat tempo on that same tempo, and then press. So if my hi-hats are that fast, I'm going to want a step size of 1 16th. So that's just a quick way to easily hear how fast that step size actually is. It might be easier to hear it rather than see it in the software. So I'm going to exit note repeat, and now that I know my step size, I'm going to change that to 1 16th. Now you can do the same thing in the software. Just click down here to open up the menu and select one of these tempos. Or you can do the keyboard shortcuts. It's just the number keys, 1 through 8, I think, or just the number keys, and then hold the shift button to enter the triplet values of those. So that way, it's very easy to set your step size to whatever you want. Now that I have that set, I'm going to record a pattern and show you why we're actually doing this. So chances are, especially if you're getting used to machine, your timing isn't going to be exactly on. So there's an automated process called quantization that's going to move your notes to the nearest grid line. And that's why it's so important to set your grid to the right resolution. If your step size wasn't small enough, these notes would move too far and it wouldn't sound right. But now we have our grid set, so we can perform quantization and make sure our timing sounds right on. So on the hardware, you just have to press the shift button and then pads 5 or 6. Now pad 5 will fully quantize it, move it exactly to the line, Pad 6 will move it halfway to that line, so you can preserve some of your natural swing from when you played it live. I'll show you both right now. Now you can undo just by pressing shift in the first pad, and quantize 50%. I'm going to undo that again, and to show you in the software, you can use the keyboard commands Alt-Q to quantize fully, and then Alt-Shift-Q to quantize halfway. So you can work both in the software and the hardware. Alternatively, you can quantize just selected notes. So I'm going to undo this, and then just select a few different notes in the software, maybe all my hi-hats, and then quantize those using the same commands as before. Now depending on your timing, that might sound nice or that might sound a little bit off. It doesn't sound quite right for this exact pattern right now. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about is enabling live quantization. So I'm going to clear my pattern here, and then enter into recording mode just by pressing shift and grid. And that's going to give me some options here. So I'm going to scroll all the way over with these arrows, and then turn quantize mode over to on. Now this is going to automatically quantize those notes after I play them live. Now the changes won't happen immediately, so you won't get any weird latency effects, but as soon as the pattern starts to loop back, you'll hear that the notes have automatically moved to the nearest grid lines. So I'll show you that right now. Just like that, your notes are automatically locked into the grid and they sound exactly on time. If you start to use too much quantization, you might get this overly digital, exact, computerized sound, and that can kind of get a little bit overbearing. If everything lines up exactly right, there's no room for human error, no room for any swing or something like that. But luckily, you can emulate that using the software. You can do this through something called the Groove. So I'll show it on the hardware first. You can apply this on the master group or sound level, and for now I'll do it on the group for my drums. So I'm going to select my group level here, hold the nav button, make sure I'm on channel up here, and then use the knob to select groove. 
And here you can see we have a few different options. First of all, you have amount, that's just going to change the amount. Then you have cycle, and then invert that cycle, which is a toggle between on and off. So it's kind of confusing to show exactly what this does, but I think the best way to do it is just to mess around with these settings while it's playing back, and you can hear the changes that it makes. So using this at really high levels can get some very interesting effects that off-the-grid syncopated sound to it. I'll show you how to do it in the software just so you know how to do it both ways. So again, select the level that you want to apply it on, make sure you're clicking on this knob instead of this plugin down here, and then just select Groove and you have your options here. It's important to note that Groove isn't actually going to change the position of your notes. So at any time, if you don't like what it sounds like, just turn your amount all the way down and it'll be exactly in time again without any swing to it. So, between quantization and groove, you can get your notes either locked in exactly, or off the grid sounding and very syncopated. I'd recommend playing around with the different settings to find a sound that you like.